Hey guys, Neil from the Overclocker magazine. So, King Bank, remember the Soul Blade DDR5 kit I spoke about a while ago? Well, in as much as that was great value, most of us would rather buy locally for a number of reasons than on AliExpress. Fortunately, you can now buy some of King Bank's DRAM and SSDs from Wootway. This particular kit I have here is available for 3,599 from Wootway or 170 US dollars from Amazon, excluding shipping and duties. As such, this is by far the most affordable 48GB high-performance kit money can buy. The closest to this memory in pricing, at least locally, is 700 Rand more for a lower spec. Before I go on about that, however, part of why KingBank can afford to have memory at this price is because not so much goes into the packaging, the presentation, and all that other good stuff you're used to. I can imagine there's some savings there. What it does mean, however, is that you and I get memory that has competent heat sinks but isn't, in terms of design at least, the most exciting. I'm not sure what you'll make out of this, but I can imagine some of you are going to appreciate this particular aesthetic. Another reason why KingBank is able to sell memory at such affordable pricing is because they have a different binning standard, let's say, compared to their competitors. For instance, where another vendor may deem 1.45 volts too high a voltage for a particular frequency and timing configuration, KingBank would say, nah, we're going to go with that. As a result, we, the end users, get some incredible deals on memory, especially since some of us would inevitably try higher voltages anyway, at least up to 1.5 volts. This particular kit that doesn't have a model name operates at a tight 28353576 at 1.45 volts, at DDR5-6000 of course. I was interested in this memory not only because of the price, but the unusual timings and capacity and choice of ICs of course, which are the Hynix MDI ICs. So, to cut a long story short, this memory is meant for both Intel and AMD platforms. On the ROG Maximus Z890 Apex, I was able to stabilize the memory at DDR5-8400 CL38 at the default operating voltage, yes, 1.45 volts of course. A respectable overclocking margin and this was pretty much the same on the AM5 platform as well, the ROG Crosshair XA70E Apex, the board of choice there. That being said, I actually tested on the AMD platform showing both DDR5-6400 CL28 and DDR5-8000 CL38 against the XMP profile. Actually, I'll be switching to their older Ryzen 8600G for memory reviews on the AM5 platform until the next generation of AMD Ryzen CPUs shows up. But for now, and as usual, testing was done on the AMD Ryzen 9 9900X, the ROG Crosshair X870E Apex, the ROG Strix, GeForce RTX 4080, all of which was powered by the Corsair HX 1500i and cooled by the Corsair Titan RX 360mm AIO. First up, we have Ida64 memory bandwidth. As expected here, the higher DRAM frequency allows more overall system memory bandwidth despite running a lower gear ratio than XMP and 6400. In memory latency, however, we can see that 6400 CL28 has the advantage even if slight. In Geekbench 6, you can see that DDR5-8000, despite the more relaxed timings, results in better performance. You'll see this isn't always the case, however. For example, in Geekbench AI, 6400 CL28 outpaces both XMP and DDR5-8000. It must be said, though, that the differences are quite small. In SuperPi 32M, again as expected, 6400 is the best, followed by 8000 and last, of course, 6000. Still, all these results are relatively close to one another. In Benchmates 7-zip benchmark, once again, we can see that 6400 has the nod over 8000, even if slight. Then, in White Cruncher 2.5b, things swing back in DDR5 8000's favor. While in V-Ray 6 CPU benchmark, this returns things back to normal with 6400 leading the pack. The first of our game tests, Hitman World of Assassination, shows that 6400, much like the synthetic tests had been suggesting, is the fastest of the lot. Small margins, of course, but still consistent with previous results. In Forza Horizon 5, again, we can see the same thing with 6400 leading, while for some reason in this benchmark, DDR5 8000 is actually a hair slower than running XMP. Dragon Age The Veil Guard shows that all these settings deliver identical performance and that the bottleneck is either the CPU, GPU, or both. Finally, we have Marvel's Spider-Man 2, which is also GPU-bound, where the average frame rate is concerned. However, note how DDR5-8000 has much higher 1% lows. Interesting for me in all this is how DDR5-8000, not tuned to the same degree as the 6400, delivers largely the same performance. And in fact, I'd wager that with sub-timings tuned, DDR5-8000 could be faster. 
All right then, so with the benchmarks done, it's pretty easy to see why there's immense value in this King Bank kit. Be it you're running 6400 or 8000 on the AM5 platform, we'll get pretty similar and impressive results, of course. And even at XMP, I think the numbers are fairly good. That it doesn't have a series name, a model name, good packaging, or looks peculiar to some people. Um, when you balance that against the pricing, the overshocking headroom, local availability and performance, man, like you're looking at the bargain of all bargains when it comes to DDR5 memory. I mean, look no further than this if you're looking for a bargain. I seriously can't believe how affordable this memory is for what it's capable of doing as well. Either way, I've been there and this has been the King Bank DDR5 6000 CL4848 48GB kit. Until the next time, take great care of yourselves guys and I'll see you on the flip side and peace.